Hello, everybody. It's me, Lamani. Happy Thursday. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, the video schedule has been a little weird, but you know, we're working with mutators, doing a lot of stuff. I'm pretty busy, but I'm going to keep putting videos out. Anyway, today I'm going to have a little confession here. I've been holding something in the back pocket that I think is going to be extremely useful and really solid in mutator expeditions. I haven't talked about it yet. I've tested it on the PTR. I did it on live today just to make sure everything's working okay. And I, I had a lot of fun with it. It's definitely a higher skill cap build for healers, but I think it has insane potential for high mutator expeditions, just given what we've seen so far, what we've tested, and just kind of where the state of the game is. So I have this build. I call it the girthy chain healer build. I think it's going to be insane, and it's build I'm going to start using quite a bit here. Secondary is still the same, but... The premise is I'm using Light's Embrace, Divine Embrace, and Sacred Ground. It is a full targeted healing build that has an insane amount of output. And I think it's a build that nobody has really tried. So this is brand new, you know, in terms of PVE and the output and the potential of it, I think are, are unmatched. Now, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for all your support. I know New World's kind of in a spot where it's like viewership's down. Uh, there's not as many people playing, but I believe in the grind. I believe in the game, and I'm appreciative for every single one of you. Everybody who comments, watches, subs, donos, everything you do for me, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So thank you for, for being a supporter of me. Anyway, if you want to connect with me, leave a comment. I'll be a little bit more responsive. I'm aiming to just answer everything on weekends. Uh, DM me in Discord. I answer questions all the time. Um, follow us on Twitch. We stream around 10.30 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, Central Time, and we go for five, six hours. Um, what's next? Follow us on TikTok, Twitter, all that jazz. All right. And if you want to support me directly, I do have a Patreon, so feel free to hit that up. And I ask, as always, please do that weird YouTube stuff. Give me a like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. Tell your grandma or your grandpa, and I would really appreciate it. Now, this build, if you want to go for it, I'm giving it to you early. Enjoy it, love it, appreciate it, and I hope it gives you a little bit more diversity in your healing kit. Still, I'm going to use Orb. I'm going to use Splash of Light as the time comes, but this is one that I'm having a ton of fun with, and I think will be really solid as there's you know more, more difficult uh, mutators. Let's get into the build deep dive here. I did a little bit of a bait on stream today. I said I was recording, you know, a deep dive for a different video, and I, I'm going to use that later. But I, I'm doing something a little special because I didn't want to spoil it. So as always, hope you have a great day. Hope you like the build, and let's get into it. All right, so here we are in New World Database, and what do we have cooking on our life staff? It's going to be a little bit different. So I'm actually going to start on the right side. So here is what I end up doing on the right side. I go Bend Light, I go Protector's Touch, I go Protector's Strength, and Light's Embrace. Lights Embrace, insane amount of healing, quick burst healing. You can keep popping these off on a couple different people and you're good to go. You know, the more buffs that they have, the better. This isn't a super buff heavy build, so you're not getting as much Lights Embrace healing as you could, but it's still huge. You get a ton out of it, especially when they're in a sacred ground. But this is all we're doing on the protector side. Unfortunately, I can't get down to Spirits United with the way I set it up, unless I was to kind of flip this point and another one on the left side, but we're going to talk through that. So healing side, like normal, we need Absolved, we need Blissful Touch, we're going to need Mending Touch, right? We need something to remove some debuffs. Mending Touch is super useful, like on a fight like Cilia when people are getting rooted, to just shoot it through everybody. Or, you know, if they're slow as in a mutator, anything. Just, it's a little harder to aim, but it's our only source of debuff removal. And the only way that we could otherwise remove debuffs is through Splash of Light. And you have to actually heal them for an amount in order for that debuff to be removed. And this is the only way for us to remove a DBF on ourselves. I want to talk to AGS about that one because I think that's ridiculous. But anyway, we go into our Revitalize, Desperate Speed, Cooldown Reduction. We take Sacred Ground, 50%. This is going to synergize really well with this. We still take Intensify to get the big girthy heal, and we take Sacred Protection, and then we take Divine Blessing. Now, some of you may be sitting there now and saying, Lamani, what are we doing next? We still have four points. Are you going to go into Orb or Beacon? No, I'm not. We're going Divine Embrace. And we're going to take Divine Embrace all the way down. So 120% weapon damage heal. As you get better life staffs and scale higher, it's a pretty solid heal. We reduce it down to 20 mana, so it's pretty much on par with Light's Embrace. You can combo these really fast together. It does take a longer cast time, but you can sort of kind of animation cancel the end of it if you dash. Um, otherwise, you stack these on top of somebody. If you get both of them off, it, it, it's a huge burst. But here's why we're taking it. There have been so many times where I'm like, huh, I wish I had Splash of Light to heal everybody because everybody dropped below 50% because they all just got hit by fire or they all just got hit by a sword swipe or something like that, okay? So what was I thinking? I was like, how can I get some more healing out of it? What can I do? Because just Splash of Light, it's like a 2K heal. It's not that great. And I started thinking about it, right? I was like, 
Divine Embrace, nobody uses that. And I was like, Shared Struggle is kind of interesting. It's eight meters. And then so is Rebound. So I decided, you know, I, I have that opportunity. Eight meters is much farther than you'd actually think it is. It isn't that far, but the majority of the player base is melee anyway. Or even if they're ranged, they're typically stacking in melee to get Oblivions. So there is a huge room to use this. The one thing that is slightly frustrating is it's going to do um, the closest ally to them. So even if there's two people who are at 50%, but the person who only needs a thousand healing also is near them, it'll rebound to them first. Um, so it doesn't always, I, I need to look into that a little bit more. But for those times where everybody, you know, gets bursted by something, you hit a shared struggle and you can bounce, 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 everybody gets healed. Generally, you'll at least get one bounce when you use it, right? So try to save it until they're below 50% health so it at least bounces to one other guy. You can heal it on yourself and kind of force a bounce if, if you need to. But it has a ton of healing potential, and I think a lot of people are sleeping on it, especially with the perk on it. Now, I need to test this a little bit more, but everything I was seeing was that with Refreshing Divine Embrace, when you heal somebody below 50% health, so one, we get like this, right? That's, that's super nice. But we get the bounce, but we also get cooldown reduction. It's like 40%. Now, what I could tell was if it bounced to multiple people, that's 40%, 40%. Meaning we could pretty much just, you know, hit another free one right after. So there is some potential for that. Now, where is the downfall of Divine Embrace? You need to position better because you sit like this forever and it's a little clunky, but I'm sure they'll work on it in the future. I just think it's a fun build. There's a lot of potential here and I'm going to start using it, trying it in high mutators and give it a go. So if you're coming for the bookmark, what are we doing? Full targeted healing. We have Light's Embrace. We have Divine Embrace. Divine Embrace is a sick AOE heal that you can shoot to across like, you know, three other people. And then we have Sacred Ground. The only thing I will say with this build is that you need to be cautious with your sacred ground. Don't just use it very liberally. You have to be a little bit more conservative with it. Be better about placement. Put it in a good spot. Keep it on your tank or whoever, you know, a giant clump. And you have to be better with your blissful touches. A lot of the time, I'll just kind of like AFK shoot at the boss and not aim them through my teammates. You need to be aiming blissful touches through teammates to get like those top offs. Now, I will say our maintenance, right? We don't have orb, we don't have beacons, we don't have like that constant hot ticking, but that maintenance comes from the void gauntlet. So we need to be pretty, pretty good about making sure we're switching, keeping essence rupture up and throwing out orbs occasionally. But let's swap over to that now. All right, party people, void gauntlet. I'm gonna run through this quick. You've seen this one before. We go orb of decay, huge amount of healing. Blessed matters here because on the way back, that hot it applies. It mine's ticking for like 650, 700 ish per tick for four, six seconds. Right, six seconds with, with all of your extensions. And that's a lot of healing. You can also pop it then for a pretty big heal. It's like 2.5-ish K uh, for me right now. Then we'll take uh, Refreshing Harvest to get some cooldown reduction in there when we can. Why not? You know, if you're just trying to get some mana back, I'm not gonna sit there and force cooldowns. So it's not huge. Sorry, OJ's clicking my mouse with me. And then we're gonna take Radiant Efficiency to help with mana costs while we're above 50%. So it's big to get these spells out first like especially Essence Rupture. So Essence Rupture is the other one we're gonna go for. This is so strong. Somebody asked me if it was crits only because theirs seemed like it was only doing crits. I confirmed it when I was doing my run earlier. Um, this will do all healing sources or all sources of damage, sorry, except for dots. So it's not just crits, crits just help a lot. And then it pops, right? So we get that pop for like two, 2.5K and then everybody's doing self healing. So this is kind of our maintenance for having no orb, no beacon. We do miss out on some fortify with our build, but we have more healing potential. And then orb kind of does the rest. We then go into mending evasion, which is bugged at the moment. Ask me about mending evasion if you want to find out why it's bugged, because I'm not going to share it because it's an exploit. Um, next, glimpse of the void, huge. You can reset if you have essence interrupter active. You can throw another one on for a quick burst heal, or it's another option just to get another orb out there. So I could orb pop right, and then it puts two stacks of a rend on them, gives me uh, two stacks hit them with Essence Rupture, then just sit there like this for a while and then throw out another orb if, if I need to, if I'm trying to forge cooldowns. Then on this side, we want crit chance uh, just for the cooldown reduction. So that weird, but cooldown reduction is king. So any crit opportunity you have here, if you can get keen on like a void gauntlet, that'd be pretty sick too, because it's just more cooldown reduction at the end of the day. We're gonna go into Oblivion. Oblivion is so good in a group, especially for mutators, 30% power. We get the weaken on it and then everybody's getting stamina back. We'll take cooldown reduction, we'll take crit chance, and then you can kind of flex this last point. I typically do uh, the health drain one because I'm mostly going to drain once I've run out of mana, and so I wanna get less health drain when I'm below 25%. I think I have more value there. So this is what I use um, for my Void Gauntlet. If you're coming from the bookmark, what's the goal here? Keep Essence Rupture active as much as you possibly can. 
When you have the opportunity to get resets from Glyphs of the Void, take advantage of it. Orb of Decay is a huge heal over time. It, it is big. So don't just throw it out and waste mana. Be cautious with it. There's too many times where I just throw it out. It's a really solid healing cooldown. It'll heal for like over 4k over time, and you can even pop it if you want to. Um, take advantage of it, and then drop Oblivions for group damage, the weekend, and also do some cooldown reset. Get your Essence Rupture back up, get your Oblivion back up, and just go to town, help your damage in the Mutator. I think Void Gauntlet is the only option for a Mutator healer, um, unless you're like kind of some weird damage hybrid, but there's just so much healing opportunity for it. It'd be ridiculous if you didn't take it. So enjoy. All right. Party people, let's get into it. What am I doing for gear and attributes here? So attributes with this kind of chain healer build. I say shoot for 150 con nowadays. I think 150 con puts you in an amazing spot for mutators. You have a ton of health. You take less crit damage. It's not the huge thing, but I'm playing at like 11.5, 11.6 ish health, and and you're you're in a really solid spot. You have a lot of defensiveness when you're playing a medium. If you want to play this in heavy too, go for it. And I think having over 300 focus is the move. Right, so get that new Void Gauntlet crafted. You can craft a blessed one now, so you can just pure focus pump. You don't even have to worry about having some int. But I think the 150 con, 300 plus focus is a really good spot. If you want to too, if you can go 300, 200, be my guest, go for it. I, I think I can, I, I could do that if I started doing some other stuff and change my gear up a little bit. But 150 con is the goal. That, that's, that's what I would say. Um, if you really want to play it, you can go 100, be my guest. But anyway, that, that's what I would suggest for attributes. As far as gearing goes, first I'm gonna change this up a little bit. Let's talk weapons first. Woda. If you don't have a Woda as a healer, go get one. That, that's all I can say. Uh, the drop rates are nuts. Go get a, go get a Woda. Blessed refreshing move with refreshing is probably the best role you can get, especially with a build like this where you're gonna have more focus on your life staff uptime. You're just gonna have constant heals going, right? You you have the opportunity to throw out a divine embrace and a lights embrace and just keep alternating, right? You should always have a heal for somebody. It's almost impossible to not have something, right? In worst case scenario, flip to the Void Gauntlet, get a quick burst heal. Next, Void Gauntlet. I got this puppy crafted yesterday by my guy Diesel. So Diesel, if you're there, thank you. Um, you can force a blessed roll. The big thing for me was getting the focus. I wanted a pure focus roll. That is key because mine for so long has had int on it. So what are we looking for on a Void Gauntlet? I would say one is blessed. Two, if I could get a keen crit chance is king if we can get some extra crit chance when we're essence rupturing when we're throwing out orb that's just gonna kind of give you more cooldown reduction right so that's great refreshing move is not that great people think it is because it only applies to your light and heavy attacks it's not your abilities so it's not that good if you're using it for a straight healer okay so keep that in mind third perk I, I mean, I think any of my two are good, right? It, it's kind of a whatever. I do think diminishing orb or nullifying oblivion will be fantastic for mutators because there are a lot of buffs that mobs put on themselves that people aren't realizing that you can reduce durations of or that you can just simply take off. So try and get some of those perks on your void gauntlet and your life staff. A couple things I want to address. I run diamonds in both. Why? Because one, <coughs> sorry, because of one, if I throw out a full health orb or a full health essence rupture, that's 15% more healing on the orb hot or on the essence rupture explosion or the orb explosion and that's make sure you just don't force a mana tick right before you do it you have to time your abilities same thing with the life staff we want you know diamond diamond is the only thing that's going to affect your healing but next does blessed stack no blessed does not stack that is the reason why i use it on the void gauntlet is because i get more healing on orb and essence rupture that's all so just keep that in mind gearing i have a bunch of rubies in you can see but i'm running medium i am Heavy helmet, heavy chest, medium gloves, light pants, medium boots. There's a bunch of different top end medium combinations you can do. DM me in Discord if you want the infographic. But the big things, I'm running Void Bent right now because elemental resistance is just absolutely necessary for higher mutators. So I figured why not just throw on some, you know, higher elemental resist gear. And I don't have that great of gear. I didn't have all sweaty 600 gear. So we're working on it, people. But what I will say is for gems in gear, make sure if you're running mutators that you have it set for the affix in. For some reason right now, I only have the 3% gems because I was... I don't know, I just had them laying around, I don't remember. But having the elemental resistance gem for whatever mutator you're running is going to be extremely beneficial for you in terms of damage reduction. Some of you have void, some of you have fire right now, like if you're on Eden, get that gem. It will be expensive, but get it. You will not regret it. As far as ability perks, we're gonna want, I just picked up these gold gloves for 500 gold. I don't know why this isn't 600 yet. I can go force that. But uh, I picked up these gloves for 500 gold. Refreshing Divine Embrace. When healing somebody below 50% health, reduce the cooldown by 46%. That essentially halves the cooldown. It's right back up. 
right? So whenever somebody's below 50% health, focus on using it on them because it will rebound to somebody within eight meters. And if anybody needs healing, it's free heal, right? You do not have to spend mana on it. It's a lot, of, it's a big mana saver sometimes. Next, we want Accelerating Lights Embrace. I say, why not? It's an extra one. And that haste is sometimes really, really nice. Um, uh, so these are just my general pants, for PVP, PVE. I've been using those. Elemental Aversion is another great one for mutators, but you're also gonna end up needing a whole set of like ancient Bane gear as you get up there. Last one, these are horrible, but it was the only way I could fit in Fortifying Sacred Ground. Currently looking for more boots, okay? Let me know, let me know. Just looking for all new gear. If you're, if you're a gear lord on Eden, let me know. Anyway, Fortifying Sacred Ground, we need it. It's fantastic. Get it in your build. As far as jewelry is going, I have a neck with health and refreshing evasion. Health is my big one. I think health divine and then like refreshing or refreshing evasion would be fantastic. Refreshing evasion, really, really, really nice with how much we dodge as a healer. So try and fit that in your build. It does stack. My ring, I have keen awareness and sacred. You want a sacred hardy ring. I just couldn't get one. Uh, so this is the ring I've been using. Extra crit chance on the void gauntlet doesn't hurt. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit extra damage on your life staff, but heals can't crit. So don't worry about it. And then earring. I just have a regenerating, refreshing one. Again, nothing too too exciting. I, I miss my, uh, my my toast, but regenerating is a solid one to get. Refreshing, refreshing evasion, um, you know, any of the, pretty much any of the toast ones, depends. But keep those in mind. So that's what I would say for all your gear. I can't switch out these gems because they are bound to these. They're, it's a diamond earring and onyx rings and neck. So that's what I'd say for weapons and gearing. So let me know if you have any questions about that in the comments. Send me a DM if you need anything. As far as consumables go, as a healer, just use a bear flank. It's so cheap. It's a tier five food. You're getting focus con. Just go use it. It's going to make your life so much better. That's why I have my attributes the way they are. That's all. All right, let's get into gameplay here. So what am I doing? Always start off using your void gauntlet. Throw down essence rupture and oblivion first. You'll get that 25% mana reduction. So it's super nice when you swap back to your life staff. I would say hold orb pretty liberally. If people are taking a bunch of damage off the spot, like right off the start, just throw orb out there. You'll get a heal over time running on them or you can pop it. But what am I doing? This is mainly a life staff heavy build, right? So we're doing a lot of left clicking, a lot of light attacks, a lot of heavy attacks to keep those intensifies rolling. But you have to make sure that you are still rotating to your void gauntlet so that you can apply essence rupture, oblivion when it's up, and throwing out orb for supplemental healing. Now you'll see a couple times people are below 50% health and I hit them with uh, divine embrace. I'm getting that little bounce, right? Then I also have light embrace. Now I have those options. You'll see they're constantly off cooldown. I can boom, divine. Boom, lights, and just keep switching between targets. It's a high, higher skill cap uh, healer build because we have to deal with mouse wheel scrolling or whatever you choose to you know, do your target stuff. But it has a lot of healing potential. We have the bounce on Divine Embrace, and I'm gonna show you how that works, but we also can follow it up with a Lights Embrace if somebody takes a ton of damage. It's a quick, instant burst heal, and I find that using this kind of build helps me conserve mana a little bit better, right? Because I have the potential to chain. I'm not really just shooting out orbs for no reason and burning all this mana um it, it's really solid what i will say though is my one thing is you have to be better about your sacred ground the only way that this build really succeeds is when you're using sacred ground in a way that makes sure you're not wasting the cooldown you have to place it where your tank's going to be you don't want to waste it that that is my biggest thing just please don't waste it it does so much aoe healing it does so much single target healing and when you're bouncing it if you hit somebody when they're in sacred ground you will heal them for like seven eight k almost it, it's pretty insane so use sacred ground very conservatively but you have tons of heals to rotate through and make sure you're keeping your void gauntlet buffs up now let's dive into a little something different so i can show you how divine embrace actually works because the bounce potential of it is insane all right, so let's take a little look here. This is pretty much unbuffed. I dash back, but watch it bounces between three people. You'll see all those animations. It doesn't heal the last one, but each of them gets healed. So we're seeing about a 5K heal with just the dash. But when I sacred ground and put that down, watch how big it gets. We're sitting at, let's see, like 7K-ish per person. And again, they're all getting healed by it. You see the animation. Now watch how far we can actually get them spread out. You'll see this isn't even a full eight meters, but it's going to hit every single one of them. And he gets the animation at the end. There's just huge spread potential for it. And that's pretty insane when you have a pretty high melee comp. I think this build has a lot of room in the current healing meta, and it's gonna be interesting to play. And honestly, I'm having a ton of fun messing around with it, playing with it, and I'm hoping to show it off on stream. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this build and I hope you give it a shot. If you do, let me know. DM me if you have any questions about it, like always. Uh, keep on doing the weird YouTube stuff. Please like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. I'd appreciate it. 
follow the socials. That's Twitter, TikTok. Follow us on Twitch. We stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10.30 a.m. Go for about five or six hours. Um, what else? I, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we have a Patreon. If you want to support me directly, go ahead and do that. Um, what do I do on my Patreon? I give early video releases, like this one will come out early. I show clips of me playing other games, I ask for input. It's another, you know, line of connection with me. So feel free to connect with me in that way if you want to. But as always, thank you to every single one of my patrons. So thank you, Jacob, Dougie, Shane, Gil, Anarino, Ajuro, Nathaniel, Thonar, Joseph, Tarvi, Generica, Ronan, Ralph, Bob, Florian, Blue Beagle, GD, GDB, Jay Kitchens, Dexter, Rich, Josh, Michelle, Nate, Rich, and Somanex. Thank you all for your support. But thank you to every single one of you just for watching this video. I appreciate all of you, and thank you for everything that you do for me. Um, if you need anything in the meantime, connect with me, please. But as always, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and thank you, every single one of you, for being you.